Hi everyone, welcome to this video on Tech's Hands on Questions. If you like the video, please don't forget to subscribe to my channel. Now let's get started with today's topic. Today we will be discussing the three types of macros, standard, batch and iterative. In standard macro is kind of a function which is written in such a way that it can be used multiple times and by anyone. If you have a coding background, you can think this as a function in Java. If you are from SQL background, you can think this as a stored procedure or a function even in SQL. Batch macros are also functions, but the difference is they are being controlled by a control parameter. The control parameter defines how many times it has to iterate or loop through. It is similar to a for loop in Java programming. A last type is iterative macro in which the function is performed but until a condition is met. So here we don't have a control or a defined set of iteration. There is a condition given and based on that the iteration keeps happening. So this is similar to a while loop in any programming language. Now let's get started with the questions. In today's video, we'll be doing the standard and batch question. The iterative question we'll do in the next upcoming video. So stay tuned for that. So for standard macro, we'll input a value from the user and we'll try to find the square of the number. So let's move on to alteryx. Our first task would be to get the sample input. We'll bring a text input name it as num and let's give it a value of 1. For the function part, we'll have to bring in a formula tool to calculate the square. We'll connect our input to the function. Let's give the column name as square and we'll do num into num. Okay. For the output part, we'll have to go to our interface tool to bring in the macro output. And we'll connect our function to this output. To use the user interactivity, so this interface tool is mainly used for the macro functions. Let's bring in a text box which will allow the user to enter the value it wants. We'll give the user the, we'll display the message as enter the number. So once the user enters the number, what we'll do, we'll have to connect this to our sample input which we have provided. And we'll replace the value which we have given in our sample input, which is the number, to the number provided by the user. There are multiple options for the action type where it is update value, update with value, the with formula, update cell. For now, I'll just keep it as update the first cell and the first column since here it is the first column and first cell. We'll have to save this macro. Let's save this as a batch, sorry, standard. You see, the extension is yxnc. After this save, let's try to run this. For that, we'll have to click anywhere, and uh, I forgot to show you. If you click anywhere in the canvas and go to the workflow, right? By default, every macro is a standard macro. So let's go back, click on the white space, okay, canvas, and to bring in the macro, which is called a standard macro. So if you see, this doesn't have an input configured to it, it just has an output. For that, let's bring in a browse to see the output. We click on the macro, it's telling us to enter a number, let's enter a number of 10. And we get the output as 100. Let's try 12. And get 144, okay? So this works fine. So if you give this macro to someone, anyone can enter any number and you use this code to find the square. They don't have to rewrite the code or copy the code again, okay? So this is how a standard macro will work. For batch macro, we'll input the value from the user. 
and instead of finding square, we'll input a power value also from the user. And based on the power value, we'll show the power of that number. So let's move on to this example. So we'll start with the same process which we followed in the previous one. First of all, we'll have to bring in the sample input for macro to understand what input we're going to give it. We're going to give it a number along with a power. So let it be one, let it be one. For a function, we'll again bring in a formula tool. Let's create a column called as power and to calculate the power, we'll use the power function and we'll pass in the number to it. Sorry, I had to connect this, then it can recognize. the number to it and the power which we'll be getting from the user. These two values will define it here. Next would be to get in our output. So let's bring in our macro output and join our function to this. So two things are remaining. One is a user input for the power and the user input for the text. So in user input for text, uh, the number which will, will be seen as we did in standard macro. Let's try to bring in the text box and we'll do enter num we'll connect this to our input and same as the previous one right we'll try to update the cell we'll update the first row first column if you click on the canvas it's still a standard macro okay so we can solve this question using standard macro. We can bring in one more text input. We can do this update and we can update the second value of our power. Let's just show you how we can use this as a batch macro. For that, we have to bring this control parameter on the canvas. And we'll have to connect this control parameter to our input tool. So again, you see this value is there, right? This time I'll update the column two from here, not the column one. And let's see the macro type now. So you see, I didn't change anything. It automatically changed into your batch macro. So once we drop in the control parameter, the outreach changes the macro to your batch macro. So this part is done. Let's save this as a batch batch macro and let's try to run this one so first of all let's try to bring in our macro to see what all values it needs let's bring in the batch macro we see two anchors right one for the input one for output for the input it means the control parameter enter num is user defined so to define that for now let me bring in a text input to give it the power value we give it as power. Sorry. Let me give it as three. Connect this. For output, I'll bring in a browse tool and connect this macro to this browse tool. Now, for the control parameter, let's select the power. And I'll give it a power of three. Let's, let me enter two to, let's get the output as eight. So we got our output eight. Now let's try with something else. Let put a power of 2 and number as 20 we get 400 okay so this is how a batch macro will be working i'll be posting the iterative macro in the next video please stay tuned to check that out thank you for watching